A very, very warm welcome from me on behalf of everyone here at uh, the Aegeus Bowl and Hampshire Cricket. So yeah, this is going to be a bit of a whiz through, um, and I, I'll apologise right now. Uh, for all you young digital things out there, we're going old school to start with, we're going a bit analogue here. But what I want to try and do is talk about change and managing successful change, because I guess that's what all of you are doing. The fast pace of digital, the digital environment, your jobs, I guess, are to persuade people all the time to move forward, whether it's budget holders, whether it's consumers, whatever it is. So as we're here at a cricket ground, I thought I'd share with you a story of one of the biggest changes that cricket um, encountered in the last sort of 10 years or so, and that's the creation of 2020 cricket. That's just to judge my audience uh, to start with. Who, um, who likes cricket? Hands up. <coughs> well, that's better than I was expecting, actually. Um, who doesn't like cricket? Who can't be bothered? <laughs> and that, actually, you'll see shortly, is absolutely where we started with, with, some, with some research. So um, a quick whiz through that, and I hope you get out of this just the way that we went about changing a very, very old-fashioned establishment. So cricket, for those of you who are not fans of cricket, don't know too much about it, cricket, go back 10 years or so, uh, in fact 15 years now, the year 2000, there were two forms of cricket, one that lasts five days, one that lasts much shorter version, lasts a whole day. The five day version, um, stop for lunch, stop for tea, after five days the game can still be a draw. Fantastic. Um, I gave this presentation in Italy a few uh, years ago to a golf forum, try explaining that to them, there's no chance. So this is a test match, lasts for five days, it's in Australia, 100,000 people, brilliant, very popular as you can see. This is the Aegeus Bowl, it's a one day international, that's seven hours of cricket, it's still a long time, but still at international level, very popular. I was the marketing manager at the ECB, which is the governing body of, uh, of, of cricket in this country, and this was around, as I say, 2000. The ECB is the governing body of the sport, responsible for 18 counties, Hampshire being one of those, Worcestershire, Surrey, Sussex, Middlesex, they're the sort of clubs, if you like, involved in, in cricket. Um, the MCC, the people who own Lords, and that was the decision-making body that I'll come back to later on. That was the power base, if you like, the corridors of power, the men in blazers, as they used to be called. The ECB was also responsible for grassroots cricket, for village cricket, and for domestic competitions. So the England team, playing in test matches and one-day internationals, fine. Counties like Hampshire were playing in four competitions in those days. The first of which is the championship form of the game. It lasts for four days, played in front of pretty small crowds. This is the real hardcore of cricket. This is the real connoscenti involved in this four-day format. There was a one-day competition um, as played as, a, as a, like an FA Cup, another one-day competition as a, as a league, and then a coloured clothing competition, 40 overs. This is the shortest form of the game in those days. It's still six hours long. So just keep that in your heads. What was happening? Part of my job at the time was to keep an eye on what was happening to attendances at these domestic formats, or in, in all formats in fact. Five year period into 2001 there was a 17% decline in attendances at domestic cricket. There's no business around that can sustain that sustained level of decline in its audience. Something had to be done. International cricket attendances were fine, they were going up depending on the fortunes of the England team. No real bother there. It was this decline in people coming to watch county cricket that was, that was critical. And at the time, there were headlines being written in the newspapers. Is cricket a minority sport? It's supposed to be our national summer sport. And it was really seriously in danger. So this is what I would recommend as the first thing you need to implement successful change. Identify a clear and quantifiable need for that change. There's no point in change for change's sake but a 17% decline over five years in sales looks like a pretty, pretty um, serious reason for change. The second thing that you need to do is establish a rock-solid, statistically-based argument for that change, and more importantly, the benefits of that change. So we're going to have to persuade people why to change. So the way we did this, we commissioned the biggest piece of consumer research the game had ever done. £250,000 of the research, starting with a desk audit, some good old-fashioned qual work, and some quant research as well. All of the qualitative studies that we did around the country effectively told us 
look, cricket is just inaccessible to us. And we were talking not just to the hardcore fans, we were talking to new audiences, young people, women, inner city communities, all those people who just said that we think cricket is not for us. It was structurally inaccessible. It's played during the day, during the week, when most people are at school or at work. Information, we weren't particularly good at marketing the sport. Socially inaccessible. Women thought it was for men only. Um, people from inner city communities thought you had to be kind of posh to go and watch cricket. You had to wear a blazer and a tie to go into a cricket ground. Some people even thought you had to be a member and actually escorted in by another member to actually go and see the game. So there were all of these barriers that we found around cricket. And in short, people just told us, it's a bit boring for us. So clearly something had to be done. But we were building insight from this research. We also established cricket is part of the leisure industry, competing for that leisure pound. The younger and less committed audiences at the time want a result. They don't want to wait four days for a draw. They want instant return on investing that leisure pound. So, and here we go, and look how, how things have changed now. Again, for, for you young digital things, this was our quant research at the time. It's not done online. This was 4,500 uh, in-home interviews where a researcher goes in with, a, with a, a clipboard and sits down in front of someone and says, right, I'm going to talk to you today about three things. So there could have been some soap powder, some cereal, and we were in this quant study as talking about cricket. So it was a nationally representative random sample, 4,104 adults aged over 15. The first question on this questionnaire, 15 minute questionnaire was, which of the following currently describes you? A bit like I did, ranking, do I love cricket, all the way through to I hate cricket. 36% of people, uh, well in fact, I don't like cricket at all, or I hate cricket, um, was um, only a third, sorry, only a third of this population qualified to go forward. Two thirds of the UK population said, um, I hate cricket or I don't like cricket at all. We then said to them, okay, well what about, what do you know about cricket? Um, nothing at all, through to, I know a lot about cricket. That took a few more people out as well. So we ended up with, um, a third of the UK population, effectively, on a, on a, on a statistically um, um, solid sample, saying that they were cricket tolerators. Some of those people were absolute cricket fans, and some of them were just ambivalent to it. Like most of you in the room here, when you put your hands up, a lot of you said, well, I'll take it or leave it. We called those people tolerators. We didn't throw them out of the survey because we felt they were there to be convinced. So this might be slightly tricky just to see, but just, just establishing what that sample was made up of, what those equivalent of 19 million people were actually made up of. It's very show it, easy to show it indexed. So this audience were male, they weren't female, they were higher social classes, let's flip over here, they were older people, 55 plus, and number of people in the household, so they weren't families. So we've got a pretty strong idea as to what our cricket audience actually was. It's an older, middle-aged, middle, sorry, an older, middle-class, white male, effectively, was our audience. This just puts some numbers to that. So that was the, the 19 million or so people who, uh, who created that sample. <coughs> when we asked that sample, these cricket tolerators, so how often do you go to cricket? Only 3% of people in that audience, those cricket tolerators, said they went to cricket regularly. Half of the people said they had never, ever been. So there's a lot of sort of, you know, there's only a very small number of people who were attending regularly. Who were those regular attendees? Well, again, they're male, they're not the women, they're not the young people, and they're not families. Those who never attend cricket matches, that half of that population who never attend cricket matches, who were they? Well, it's the opposite. They were the women and the young people. That was who we were looking to target and to, to change. So then we asked 18 predetermined statements. Why don't you come to cricket? What is it about our sport that's just turning you off? So it takes up too much time. 28% of people said it takes up too much time. It's just too long for me, too boring. I need a more instant return on that, uh, on that investment of my time. At this time, in New Zealand, there was a form of cricket called Cricket Max. This was 25 overs long, so that basically was around three and a half hours long. And we had a look at this. It was a bit gimmicky, but that was out there. 20 over cricket, 
so about three hours, has played in local cricket clubs, local leagues, for years and years and years. No such thing as a new idea. We were just taking something that was uh, already out there, but not in the professional area. So we asked the question of these people, so how would you find, how opinion would you find a game of cricket that only lasts for three hours? So of these people, of this sample, of these cricket tolerators, unappealing, still half of them said, no thanks. But a third of them said, yeah, we really fancy that. And there was 14% that were sort of no strong opinion, uncommitted. So we still had an equivalent UK sample size of around 8.5 million people who were really interested, 9 million people who were interested in a shorter form of the game. Who were they? Who were those people who were saying, yes, I'd find that appealing? They weren't the people who were attending regularly those boring formats. They were the people who had never attended cricket. So this is starting to look interesting from a research point of view. Who were they in social demographic proportions? These people who said, yeah, I fancy a three-hour game of cricket. They weren't the men, but they were the female audience. They were the younger people. And they were the families, the households. These slides were the ones that pretty much helped us introduce the format that we now know as 2020. So this is how we established that rock solid, statistically based argument for introducing a change. Well, that's fine. That's a bunch of marketeers coming up with this at the time. We weren't the decision makers. The decision makers were the men, and they were in those days, 100% of those decision makers were men sitting in a smoke real filled room probably at the time at Lords who were going to have to decide on whether this game this format was going to be introduced so we had to persuade those decision makers there was a board meeting in a room very much like that and the chairman of the ECB at the time Lord McLaurin who was chairman of Vodafone as you may remember chairman of Tesco's powerful guy ended up on the phone the night before ringing around the county chairman who were going to vote the next day just to try and persuade him that was going to happen so it was a straight majority vote, and it went round in alphabetical order, starting at Derbyshire, Durham, and finishes up at Warwickshire, Yorkshire, however that goes. The vote, and I've put two years into this, and the vote, show of hands. The MCC at Lords decided not to, uh, not to throw their cards in, they abstained. Seven votes against, 11-4. So we scraped in by a couple of votes, even given the strength of that, that research to show that the new audiences, that cricket could be rescued if we played it at a shorter amount of time and we could attract, attract these new audiences in. It just got through. So we sold the argument to the decision makers. That was the third part of managing successful change. The fourth and final bit is creating ownership by the key stakeholders. It's no point getting it um, voted through, but you've got to execute at that point. So we'd spent two years lobbying the players, lobbying the 18 county marketing teams. If we get this through, guys, this is going to change the face of cricket, and we need you to be ready. So we'd put loads of work into that. We took the press, who were very important. Lord McLaurin was also on the Ryder Cup committee and had a house at Valderrama, very nice. So we took the press out on a jolly over there. We'd spoken to the players twice, because we didn't want them looking at this short form of cricket as a joke. Um, and we just got all the key stakeholders, the cricket department, the players, the press, the brand teams, everyone behind this to launch this and execute it very, very quickly. We developed a brand, we developed a sponsorship strategy, and we came up with some more presentation techniques. In our insight work, people had told us, look, make this a day out, make this a social occasion. So we're trying to kind of bust the jargon, if you like, in cricket and make it more accessible. We introduced music, DJs, pitch side jacuzzis, cheerleaders, best seats in the house. We mic the players up. We put helmet cams in. We were taking cricket to another level at the time. And this is the result. Youngsters are not connecting with uh, first class domestic county cricket. A very good evening to you and welcome to the Rose Bowl for the start of 2020. Hello girls. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful performance from the Leicester Foxes. It's Middlesex. Whitewash. Okay. Send for Whitewash. <laughs> Hampshire are the champions. What a brilliant innings. He can do no wrong. We've got Bumbo. You're up there, Sid. You're a yard away. Sid, you've got to get down. Oh, my Lord. Watch out. Oh, Nick. And you, beauty. Go on, Badger. Go 
Go for it, young man. <laughs> That's more like it. You've got a new gadget that we're going to try out today, helmet cam. Tell you what, Nuts. Your hair's going up there, isn't it? I can see it from here. <laughs> That's it. What a catch! What a catch! What a way to end it! What a comeback from Essex! Oh, big appeal! And goal! Patrick! What a great, great moment. I'll get you one way or another. I'm gonna see ya. I'm gonna so we kind of done it. That was the first year of the 2020. We took audiences up um, massively from where they'd been previously. They haven't stopped increasing since. And we took that sleepy game, that domestic game that was seriously under threat through some dedicated research, and we changed the establishment. And it didn't stop there. We just finished the, I think it's the fifth series now of the Big Bash in Australia, a franchise system. They're getting crowds, averaging crowds of over 35,000 for their format of this now. This is the Indian Premier League. Um, so that's a pretty impressive stadium there. It's just gone ballistic with the population that they've got. This is 2020 format. And the way they did that, they brought even more entertainment in. This chap's called Shah Rukh Khan. He's one of the biggest Bollywood stars in India, and he owns the Kolkata Knight Riders. So they were blending all of this entertainment with the sporting activity. <coughs> They brought the best players in the world together as well. Shane Warne here is playing for Rajasthan Royals. So people have taken this format and they've used it to address similar declines and similar threats in each of their countries. Um, the entertainment went to a different level, literally. There was a World Cup of 2020 as well. And in the UK last year, um, we rebranded 2020 or T20 as the T20 Blast. So I hope that, and it's a bit of a whirlwind tour I appreciate, um, but I hope that shows how a very conservative sport and organisation with a, a systematic look at how it can change itself using customer insights, and I appreciate it's from the analogue world, but I hope that you can see and maybe take one or two clues from that into your digital environment, um, and I hope that kicks the day off um, um, appropriately. Thank you very much for listening.